first poem is called Dogs and Bones. After a few days of war, the Sarajevo streets were a catwalk for dogs. Perfumed dogs, well-groomed dogs, dogs with cut glass collars and not a flea between them. Their owners had left them as they left the burning city. The trash heaps became a battlefield where the lap dogs lost to an army of strays, lean-limbed and mangy with hate. Cowering and cleansed, the back-alley refugees retreated to the doorways of locked apartments, barking an answer to each unearthly whistle as the morning shells came in. One of those locked apartments where we kicked down the door, searching for a bastard sniper and found the skeleton of an old woman fused to a ch kitchen chair, yes, merged with the wood. She had starved to death, sitting next to a pantry crammed with cans of food. We spent a long time debating the crucial issue of her religion. Yakety yak. We could get no clue from the photos that littered the place, or the needlepoint of a knight and castle, or the hundred bottles of perfume placed around her bed. Her piously folded hands remained a secret. It was dawn before the argument died out, and we carried her into the street where dogs were fighting amid the garbage. Nothing they wouldn't risk. Nothing they wouldn't eat. Who cares anyway? Who knows whether she even believed in God? By God. God will find his hands full after this war, someone said. And we fell silent, pretending not to see her silly grin and the sudden silver glint of the can opener on its chain around her neck. <clears throat> this is beginning after everything. After I buried my mother under fire, I sprinted from the graveyard. After the soldiers came with my brother wrapped in a tarp, I gave them back his gun. After the fire in the eyes of my children as they ran to the cellar, the rats ran ahead of them. After I wiped the old woman's face with a dish towel, terrified to reveal a face I knew. After the ravenous dog feasting on blood, just another corpse in Sniper's Alley. After everything, I wanted to write poems like newspaper reports, so heartless so cold that I could forget them. Forget them in the same moment that someone might ask me, why do you write poems like newspaper reports? <clears throat> Christmas. I'm blind, I say. I don't speak again for a very long time. Of course, I'm lying about being blind. If I look out of the window to where the children are singing carols, I see how the snow seems to fetch a rainbow. I see frozen songboards, songbirds fall from the branches. I see a butcher haul a slaughtered lamb down the street. It is night. An icon burns in the stove. There's a seamless drone from the airport that makes me want to weep. I am blind, I say. I am blind. She doesn't say a word. She beats the devil's tattoo on the tabletop. I've forgotten, I whisper. I don't speak again for a very long time. Of course I'm lying about having forgotten. I think back to hoofprints in the snow and dogs on a leash. It was a manhunt. I remember my father laughed when I barked at the birds. Have you ever noticed how a vacuum cleaner sounds like a plane in takeoff? or how a TV left on too long will fix a room with a hot and heavy smell. Have you noticed the depth of frost? I ask her. Have you noticed this incredible frost at all? She's got nothing to say for herself. She might not have heard. I won't speak again. I'll sit here and watch the traffic lights adapting endlessly to whatever's best. That's me. I'm just like that. 
The whole universe buzzes above the control tower. Isn't that strange? Fish in the depths are strange, the way they live. The smell of hay in an orchard is too strange for words. Now and then, someone winks from the bottle, the genie, the puck of plum brandy. Can you see me? I ask. Can you see any jot of me, any tittle? She nods, but of course she's lying. As if I cared. As if she could understand the half of what I say. <clears throat> and lastly, this is Sarajevo spring. It is spring again. The spring is coming. It is coming in on crutches. Swallows nest in the ruins. Someone has strung a clothesline in the graveyard and a hundred diapers semaphore the wind. Peace surprised us. We needed more time to pretend we deserved it. More time to be the survivors, as if we had plans, as if we knew what next, as if our dreams were not all of seagulls and the sea. Peace is like a virus. A light fever. Peace makes our Sunday suits restless. It makes our shoes shuffle. Soldiers wander the streets, legless on Slivovitz, asking, What next? What next? They won't go home to collect their demob papers. They won't hand in their uniforms. Well, what did you expect? They needed more time. More time like the boy we carried feet first from the movie house wiped out by a happy ending. Like our neighbors who've clean forgotten how to keep a good row going. Like our local hero, a 400 meter man who sits all day by the running track in his wheelchair as if it might suddenly come to him, what next? Soon it'll be medals and flags a coat of whitewash for the orphanage walls. The children carry family albums with them wherever they go. My friend carries a child's winter glove. I think he needs more time for this, more time. I think peace has made us less than ourselves. And spring is coming. Hobble-clop, hobble-clop, hobble-clop.